Welcome everybody. Did you bring a golden refresher? If you Ray, did you bring some refreshments? I didn't. No. No problem. For the people who <laughs> I've only just started the process, so I'm I'm getting used to it. To be honest. Not a problem. Uh, what yeah. you can, what you can do is when we're going to do a prayer here in a little bit, uh, what you can just just open up. Do you have anything you can just symbolically hold in your hand, like a cup, I do. a symbol, I do. some kind of symbol. So this is what Barbados is about, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that work. That work. Yeah. We've we've had many a calls where people didn't have any water, so they they wanted to be part of the uh, ceremony, so they brought a symbolic act. Ah. Uh. And uh, these are our these are our good friends Zach and Annie coming to us from Oregon. Oregon, thank you, thank you. Where in Oregon? Um, in the Columbia Gorge. Oh my goodness, you're really doing it, roughing it. <laughs> All cell phones don't need them. Don't need a cell phone. <clears throat> Welcome to the journey of journeys, journeys, the journey of liberation, the journey of returning home to yourself, your true self, the journey of clearing out blaze programming, domestication, and nonsense which no longer serves the divine sacred you. And this water will show that to you. This water will show you who you really are. When you do enough work with it, uh, I've been at it since 1994, and it just keeps constantly surprising me. So when this goes from a fun little hobby to a lifestyle that you'll never walk away from, you'll know without even questioning it. So um, just to remind everybody, we're going to take turns. When everybody wants to share something, just simply raise your hand. There may be an icon for a hand raising thing. I haven't looked at it. Um, just real simple stuff like that. And um, we're going to get to know each other. I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about. Um, not going to go into all the protocols today, but what I did was I brought you my collection of everything. So you can see, we're like, what does Brother Sage use all these devices for? What does he use this for? And what is he using this for? And, and, and what about this thing? You guys seen this thing? The collapsible peacup. We're going go to we're gonna go into that. Uh, but first of all, let's just take a couple of deep breaths and get, get here. If you're not already barefoot, get barefoot. And here's a fun little thing that I've been doing with folks around the world, unless you're a flat earther, uh, around the world. Um, <laughs> shuffle your feet on the su surface below you a couple of times as you're breathing and imagine that energy arcing through the screen and uh, connecting all of us simultaneously. As if we're in the same RV. We're in the same camper. <laughs> um, do you guys have a copy of the book or the PDF? Yes. In the future, Ray, you'll have hard copy stuff. Perfect. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Excellent. So that came to you, no problem, through the email? Yes. Yes. I'm going to just upload it now. My laptop broke a little while ago, so I'm just using my phone to, <laughs> to do everything. Every now and then, I leave a subliminal message to remind us, you know, is this backwards or forwards? Um, it's perfect. I can read it. Okay. Just every now and then, take a deep breath because things might come up during our conversation that you go, oh, that feels uncomfortable. Let me just breathe through that. Okay. In case you didn't uh, hear the word, I had a successful Shivambo retreat in Oceanside, California, so close to the Oregon border. Uh -huh. And uh, we had 11 people show up. At one point, the backyard uh, was turning into a full out Shivambo resort. Foot soaks, massages with Oren under a gazebo. Uh, people were trying all kinds of stuff. 
And so let's bring it to Oregon. That would be fun. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You're getting a echo in there. Make sure your uh, microphones aren't too close together. Together, 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 together. <laughs> Brother Sage, sorry, I can't find the PDF you've sent me via email. Probably because I didn't send it. Oh, Hello, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, don't, I could use a personal assistant right around now. <laughs> I had a couple in California, but that was just for the California event. All right. It's the Shibambu Manual. And bear with everybody who's still bearing with. I have to find where there is a version of it that I can send. Let's go to Shibambu Manual. There it is right there. We're going to forward it to Ray. You guys are patient. Thank you very much. R-A-Y, I have you now is Ray. Use the mail drop. Will that work? Either mail drop or do I have to send it? Yeah, mail drop should be fine. Thank you. All right. It's on the way. Perfect. I've got it. Just look how fast. It's amazing how quick we got it to Barbados. Right. <laughs> Annie, would you want to? Can you forward the PDF of the manual to Zach and I as well? Bingo. Because we got this book. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, we've read it. That's great. And you haven't read its uh, next generation version? No, I've seen that pop up online. So we're probably going to get a few of those to distribute at some point. Wonderful. And let me check the list here for a second here. All right. Bingo. Um, I am sending this to you guys. All this without an organizer. A N E, and there is Zach. He's also there. Mail drop as well. Any mail drop will get to you. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't really matter. Check your email. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Check your email. Uh, the thing about using a hard copy is that you can underline stuff. Is it there? Let's see. Yes, I got it. Okay. So grab your water or your symbolic water. We've got till 1230 this morning, or excuse me, this afternoon. And then you guys can cut loose and play. Yay. All right. All right, I'm going to say this uh, prayer from page X1V in the Healing Water from Within book. You don't have to find it. You're just going to, we're going to do it kirtan style. You familiar with call or response? Mm -hmm. Okay, so grab your water. I'll read, you'll repeat, and we'll take it from there. Here we go. I take this water of life. I take this water of life. Music to my ears. I declare it the water of light. I declare it the water of light. As I bring this water within this body, as I bring this water in this body, it allows me to glow. It allows me to go out. I take this water of light. I take this water of light. I declare it the water of God or creator, whatever you like. And I declare it the water of God. I am the master of all I do and all that I am. I am the master, master of all that I, all that I do and all that I am. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the highlights of my uh, career as the uh, P guru. <laughs> People call me all kinds of stuff. 
Um, I ended up at a Water of Life convention in Las Vegas in 2018. Now, I can imagine being in a hotel conference room with 80 pee drinkers. <laughs> Every single person you meet, there was no need to, to explain. We fell in love with everybody. Because we have our own language. We have our own world. We have our own um, uh, lovely place in, to play. So it's so nice to be able to have you guys in the family. And we can do this together. Um, I'd like everybody to just take a couple of minutes and introduce yourself and tell us about your journey or any discoveries that you've made or healing or anything like that. Who would like to go first? I think we should think just we be on the same computer. Right. Okay, right. let me just log off. You make a great couple, so why not? Why not? All right, Zach. While Annie is getting there we go. Uh, there we go. Zach, Much tell better. Me, tell us about your journey and uh, where you're at with it right now. Well, um, I definitely got into more uh, urine therapy since being with Ana, uh, and uh, experimented with it a lot more than I had ever. I had only done it a few times before, like, mm, I mean, 10, 15 years ago, maybe when I was like 18. I'm 32 now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've I've been on and off with it, not um, totally regular, like every day. Uh, there was a time where I did it, you know, pretty pretty heavy for a week, and to really like, you know, keep an open mind to see the difference that it mm -hmm. that it brought me in my experience, and definitely a a, a good uh, mood uplifting, and you know, feeling lighter physically and. Um, it, it, uh, it definitely has a lot of, of power to change your mind about things too. But, uh, I'm, I'm really stoked. I'm really happy to be here and, uh, learn more about, um, you know, other people's experiences. Uh, uh you froze Zach. Keep talking. Oh, yeah? Okay. You guys froze for just a little bit. Ane, can you tell us about your journey and where you're at with it today? My journey? Well, I've been drinking peace since I was in my mom's belly, of course, like everyone else. <laughs> um, I started researching alternative uh, health topics back in 2012, 2013 and came across urine therapy then. Um, fast forward a few years later, I had my first sip when I was in Hawaii and I met you and yeah, I've been practicing ever since. Um, at the moment, I'm not like a daily drinker. It's intuitive. So I drink whenever I hear the Holy Spirit or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. tell me, uh, take a sip. Um, and it makes me feel great. And I've been sharing it online ever since. Um, yeah, I love it. It's good. I'm just so blessed to be here and, uh, have such a great water family that we can feel comfortable with sharing our experiences. Cause you know, there's some, uh, backlash that I've had to, you know, so it's good to always have a family that you feel safe with for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to learn, uh, during this course is how to, how to talk to, uh, doubters and naysayers. <clears throat> Yeah, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> yes, and here comes Tanya. She made it. She's the, there you go. Divine Feminine. She translated my book into German. Hello. Hi. Hi, Tanya. Good timing. Good timing. Um, we're asking everybody just tell us uh, about your Shibambu journey. What led up to where you're at now and what's going on with your journey now? Tanya, we've already weighed in with the others. Would you like to uh, share a little bit about your journey? Am I late? It said seven o'clock at my time and now it's two minutes to seven. I know, but we have a love affair, all of us. So we had to start early. So <laughs> you're, you're perfect timing. All right. Uh, <laughs> 
tell us about your journey and what what led up to today and what's your journey like these days with Shivambu. Yeah. <clears throat> So I was really, really sick after New Year's Eve it started, January, February, March. <clears throat> I went through <laughs> and luck, nothing helped. And luckily I found uh, urine therapy. And I said, okay, I'll try it. And immediately um, regained my power, really. I was really, I thought I was gonna die, really. I, there was so much mucus coming out of my lungs. I couldn't breathe anymore. It was very bad. Uh, yeah, and then I found um, Sage School was studying a lot about urine therapy. And then um, I said to Sage, hey, uh, my mother tongue is German, so I'll translate the book. <laughs> and that's what I did in March and then I went slowly slowly transitioning back into eating fruit and some vegetables I'm still there I'm and I'm back to fruit now <laughs> again I want to go back into the second round <laughs> of uh, doing uh, real fast this time yeah thank you um Ray did you actually Ray have you actually started yet I have um I I do try when I can in the mornings, um, but I feel like um, Anne was saying that intuition wise, you know, I do it sometimes, I don't do it sometimes. I mean, it's obviously a new taste for me, um, but I feel the benefits. I feel lighter, you know, so I do it when I can. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not trying to store some because um, I'm a nurse by background and I've just started ozone therapy. So, um, you know, reading about all sorts of different kinds of therapies, light therapies, everything. And I'd like to incorporate that with um, my business. So, you know, I thought, what's the best place to start with myself? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. And I'm glad I found your course because that will just take me even further. Good, good. Yeah. So, um, welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy you to be here. You, you will find this to be true, and Anne had mentioned it before, of the dozens of social media uh, Shivambu or Oren. You'll, you'll hear me use different words instead of urine. Oren, Shivambu, Amaroli. Uh, Zito is out there in, in Nigeria, in, in Botswana, they call it you juice because they're referring to that juice as yours. That's you juice. Um. And, uh, I need to switch to my stronger way. Oh, she's, she's going to change out to a different connection. So you'll find out in the social media groups, there are people that you can talk about this subject that you can't talk about with your partners and your mother and your daughter and your son and the neighbor and your girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so it's wonderful to find a safe, comfortable landing place so you can talk about something that's near and dear to you. Yes. And you'll even learn ways to be in relationship with roommates who don't understand why you do this crazy thing and uh, how you can keep this smell to your room or to wherever you keep it. I've had to learn that here from personal experience. So um, let me show you some of the books. Just a quick overview. We're going to talk about everything from the history of how this got started back 5,000 years ago. We're going to talk about uh, what, what took place in Rome and Greece and Germany and all these different countries that were using either externally, internally, how Rome, they taxed you for their urine. Uh, there's all kinds of things. And we're going to lead up to 1917, which was a pivotal point uh, of changing the, everyone's perception about urine therapy. I might have mentioned that to you, Ani, what happened in 1917. So um, all this is going to happen. Now, some of the books on the subject. This, this, this was my Bible, <clears throat> The Golden Fountain by Cohen Vanderkroon. This was my Bible because he did a very thorough job. And then, We're writing it down. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you go to either <laughs> Shivambu books, yeah, you got that? 
Mm-hmm. You can either go to, let me just write this down so you guys can know where to go. You can either go to shebombbooks.com. I hope I spelled that right. Or Eurotherapy Research. Tell me I got that one. Did I? Can I spell today? Research. Hopefully that's it. But the, the second one is Dr. Group. The first one is uh, Melissa, uh, who I call Shanti, my graphics designer. And some of these people have these books, a free PDF. Mm -hmm. So that's a cool thing. Uh, <clears throat> this book is The Secrets of Youthing. The original book came out in 1994 by Leonard Orr. Uh, his he passed away in, in 2019, and his wife gave me her blessings to bring it back to life and to revise it and re-edit it. And he had a whole section on Damar Tantra and urine therapy, as well as how to heal senility, how to be physically immortal. All kinds of cool stuff is in this book. And so it was this book that lit lit my fire more than the Golden Fountain, because in there it was Shiva. Some people know Shiva's Babaji. It was Shiva who told Leonard to do his drink his water. And so when I read the book, it was like Shiva sent the messenger to tell me it was time to drink my water. And I didn't even question it. I'm going, Leonard's doing this. I'm in. I popped it back and I haven't turned since. So you're a lot of people in this journey are called. It's not an intellectual process. They just either remember the womb atmosphere or just that you were the person who was going to flip the switch. and They go, that sounds all right. I'm going to try this. Wow. So you were inspired by Leonard Cohen to start drinking, Brother Sage? Leonard Orr. Oh, sorry. Leonard Cohen is some... <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the music. Music. Leonard Orr, my bad. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that about you, where your journey started. That's so cool. See, I, was, I, was a, I was a student and friend of Leonard Orr for 40 years. Wow. Oh. Every, every time he would come <clears throat> into town or wherever I was... I'd give him foot massage and reflexology, and he would go breathe in my bathtub for two hours. Wow. And uh, <laughs> it was lovely because he influenced a lot of my thinking today, from thought is creative to physical mortality, how to do conscious breath work, how to heal the birth trauma. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of his teachings have influenced me. My so, you legend. Might, you might have seen this book. He talks about one meal a day and looping or drinking your urine all day. His name yeah. is David, but people think he's a doctor. He, <laughs> but period, period. That's David Phillips. He's out in uh, England, I believe. Oh. What else we got? Sudden cures they don't want you to know about from Doc Mike Wittort. Urine mm -hmm. therapy, microbiome therapy, uh, freedom tapping, Grapefruits. This is Doc Mike, who's been doing this for 22 years, and he is so devoted to this work, he will fly or drive anywhere to his clients uh, to help them to save their life. <clears throat> he came here to work on Vijay Gupta, spent for three weeks. He just took off to Florida. He's now in Colorado Springs. He's about to go back to New Jersey, and um, he's the one who's starting this urine exchange program. Did you hear about that? No. You take a gauze pad or a cotton pad or something like this, soak it in orin, let it dry, put it between post-its, stick it in an envelope, mail it to somebody. When they get it, they put it in warm water, rehydrate it like a tea bag, and then either drink it or apply it. And you can do, you can do this two or three times. Now, listen to this. This is the brilliance of this. This is the brilliance of this. And when we get to the Shivamba Wisdoms, we might just go into the Shivamba Wisdoms after I show you all these uh, protocol things. <clears throat> the Shivamba Wisdom is that it works regardless of your considerations. It doesn't matter if you use a man's orin, a woman's, a child, an adult, a different race, a different state of health. It's a universal panacea. As a matter of fact, the way uh, my, uh, Doc Mike and I have been training, teaching people is that now he's had the urine of 50 of his clients. I've, I've had, I've sampled the urine of about 12, 13 of my students. So according to his theory, every time you take someone else's urine into your body, it adds an extra immune system to your immune system. Mm -hmm. So you might say, I've got the immunity of 13 people. 
Do you think I'm bulletproof? So whether you can get past any negative association about drinking Zach's urine, hint, hint, or, or Anne's or anybody's, uh, you'll get to find out what kind of superpowers you can have. But it's not required. He's not <laughs> just putting that out there. It's available for the, this is the same with evolving urine. Some people never got into aged urine because they still had a negative association and they're missing the potency of the evolving urine. That's something that I really want to try to experiment with because I'm, I'm usually it's like the day of or the day before and, and I'm still really wanting to give that a go and, and see what the difference is mm -hmm. and taste and, and experience. Right. And uh, you'll learn rather quickly that when you first start snorting it up your nose or putting it in your mouth, there might be a sting effect. Mm -hmm. And the astringent quality seems to happen to people who still have uh, dehydrated sinuses. Their sinuses are still dry. So it hits that dry wall and it hurts for a few seconds and it goes away. And also what it's doing, it's forming a passageway to your pineal gland. This is why uh, it's great to talk more about urine up the nose. Either drinking yeah. it. Yep. Actually, like that, yeah. actually, that was the best thing I ever did. Yeah. Should we agree on raising hands first? So you're talking. Keep going. <laughs> um, cleaning the sinus with uh, the urine was the best thing I ever started. That was the most significant experience for me. Because I felt all of a sudden I felt even more connected than usually. And I can see through all the bullshit and yeah. I can see everything that is connected. And it's so clear for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very nice feeling. Beautiful, beautiful. So we're going to get into various ways that you can get uh, Oren up into your higher brain and wake up all these different centers of the brain. When you've done this enough times and you've done enough fasting, we're going to talk about the, the joy of fasting with Oren. Um, I'm done one. I'm moving up. I'm, on, I'm working on a three-day, seven-day fast. And the, the, the record holder seems to be John, John Armstrong, who had people fast on their Oren for 100 days and heal their blindness. And you've heard about Dave Murphy, a.k.a. Um, allegedly Dave, out there in England. He was doing 30-day fasts. And he healed the cancer. He healed a whole bunch of stuff. And that's why he was doing it. But that's a whole lot. We'll get to that later on. All right. That, my other books, you might have seen my books. And I don't have a copy of the German book. Uh, this, is, this is French, Spanish. It just came out in port. It's coming out in Portuguese, German, Japanese. And I'm waiting for someone to translate the books into Tamil and Hindi. And there's the last one I'm going to show you. <clears throat> this came out in 1994. This is Martin Laura. He's in New York, and he's one of these guys who was pushing the envelope, uh, kind of like the whistleblowers, and putting it out mainstream. And he backed down. Um, so anyway, any questions about books? What's the last one again? Martin Laura, Europa. L A R A. It's called Eurotherapy. Europathy. Martin J. Lara. Okay. Now, as you read some of these authors, you got to realize the same thing that you learn from some of the health gurus is that you might not agree with all their methods. You might not agree with all of my methods. Like he he talks about adding salt in a diet. And there are some people that are against salt. He talks about using vodka with urine in certain formulas. Not my thing. So you have to figure that out. Some people talk about boiling urine. Again, not my thing. So you have to figure out, you know, how that fits for you. Any questions? All right, let me show you some of the goodies about doing this uh, protocols. <clears throat> Everybody got one of these? No, haven't needed one for years. I highly recommend you get one anyway, whether you need it or not, because this goes into the linings inside the intestines. 
just in case there's any impactions, any kind of inflammation, any kind of toxicity, parasites, anything that you're not aware of, unless you've been eating fruit your whole life? No. <laughs> All right. Very few people. There are fruitarian children. Have you guys met any of them? Zach, have you met any fruitarian children? I think maybe a long time ago, I've had some friends that were pretty, pretty extreme on that diet and their children, of course, like were raised raw foodist and yes, mostly fruit. Okay, let's go. I'm going to keep going through this very quickly. You know what this is for? Foot soaks. Foot baths. Yeah. Foot baths, foot soaks, or feet and hands. If it's big enough and you can bend over, you can use your hands at the same time. And I'll explain how to get the most benefit from a foot soak. I love a good foot soak. Oh. <laughs> Neti pot. Mm -hmm. All right. It's useful for getting nostril to nostril cleaning, but it's not as useful to get up to the higher sinuses and up into the brain. But this this will happen in a pinch if you just need to get your nostrils cleared out and you got sinus happening there. It's a good start, by the way. When you when you get into raw foods and when you get into fruitarianism, you're not going to have mucus problems because you're mm. not eating mucus forming foods. All right, keep going, keep going. Make sure you have a lot of cotton balls or cotton pads. Cotton balls you're going to use for dabbing on certain things or snorting up the nose, or occasional cuts and scratch and bruises, or if you're one of these people that gets these capillary bursts, these heal up in four days with urine therapy. Oh, really? Yeah, was... capillary bursts, when you have thin skin, light touches, sometimes it just changes colors. Yeah. On my legs, uh -huh. I'll try that. Yeah. Now I posted that, I posted this, you might have seen this, Andy, I posted this on Facebook, everyone's going, what is that, Sage, what is that? It's the Hawaiian Islands. It's a tattoo <laughs> of the Hawaiian Islands. And it was interesting, because the day before I posted it, I was talking about getting a, uh, a retreat center on Kauai. Okay. Uh, this is for implants. I put it in your rectum, two or three ounces, and let hold it there overnight or as long as you can. You can also use this device for squeezing it up the nose. These, by the way, are interesting. You find them in the kids' section at the grocery store. Well, I want you know about this guy. Eye cup, exactly. I don't have to explain that. That makes it so much easier. This is what they call an earwax removal device. So you can use this to either put it in your nose, your ears, your mouth, or wherever you can imagine what orifice is available. This costs about 4 or $5. You get it at Walgreens or you get it online. But here's the fun part. If you go down to Target Pharmacy or CVS Pharmacy and ask for one of these earwax removal kits, they say, we don't sell them, but we give them away free. The neat thing about this path, the neat thing about doing urine therapy is you probably have a lot of these appliances and devices already in your possession, but we're not, a, we haven't made the association yet. And the neat thing about this lifestyle is a lot of this stuff is free. If you just use your imagination. Uh, we're going to learn about the nebulizers. This is a mesh nebulizer as compared to the diffusers we use for essential oils. And this is great for not only snorting up the nose, but exfoliating the skin and letting it go gently, feathering your eyes. These are about $30 on Amazon. You see it holds about a third or a fourth of an ounce right there in that chamber. Mm, yeah, we're going to get one of those, definitely. And you can either use a, a plug or a USB port to charge it. Oh. Okay, what else we got going here? You've seen this guy, right? It looks like a little saucer, a little flying saucer. But if you take it and you open it up, it becomes your pea cup. 
All right. And I don't know if you women can aim into that or not, but there's the size of it. And, uh, and some people are actually getting these kind of devices for a female uh, funnel. So then you can go, okay, I'm covered. I'm in there. <laughs> All right. And then it, sh it shrinks down when you're done. And it goes back inside your backpack. Hardly takes up any room at all. Okay, so if you got this and you have to leave your town in a hurry, God knows why, and you're out hiking or you're out in the woods and you got this, you're covered. You got food, you got drink, you got hydration. That's the beauty about being on this path. People said, well, what will happen, what will happen if we run out of food and they decide to mess up with our food supply? I said, I'm not worried about it. As long as I can cut my hands and pee, I'm good anywhere. So you got to think about the big picture, what's happening on our planet. You're covered for food and nutrition. Is that a comfortable feeling? Yes, thank you. All right. An eyedropper, a dropper bottle like this, it can be cobalt or it can be copper colored. Uh, this is my three-year-old Oren. And this, this is a godsend. If you carry this in your backpack, in your uh, glove box, in your car, wherever you go, and you find yourself in the middle of the day, your brain starts to fog up. You can't track. You're not as clear as you need to be. Your energy starts to dip. You get a dropper full of this magic evolving Oren, and you will go, wow. Wow. <laughs> so this is something... I highly recommend carrying with you. You can do a handheld sprayer if you get clever. And these you can refresh your face. Or if somebody shows up in your life and has bad vibes, you can just spray it on them. <laughs> I was kidding. Okay. And I was going to create a novelty item. This was going to be called the Pissimister. <laughs> I never made it to the market. Um, the reason I, I want you guys to see this, because this is my evolving ore, and I keep this in the car. If you have some in your car, wherever you go, I have, I have this size in the car, and I have this size in the car. And the beautiful thing is, whenever you're out in the wild or out in the woods somewhere, you're someplace where there's nobody around, you can give yourself a full out bath. You can give yourself a massage. You can massage your hair. And this is your backup supply in case you need to wake up. So if you do leave this in the car, you've got to leave a little gap of air or else the sucker will freeze in the wintertime. I've, I've lost mm -hmm. a few jars that broke because I overpacked it in there. Just so you know that. This right here is Ormus Gold. I learned this trick from Dr. Oz Hansen. If you take this and leave it out in the sun when it dries up, that's concentrated ore, and she says this is what the alchemists called Ormus gold, with all the stem cells, antibodies, life force in it. And all you do is scrape it out, and then you can either put it in your nose or rehydrate or whatever it is. So you can actually make what St. Germain was doing. Maybe St. Germain was into urine therapy. Who knows? All right, you guys, do you use pH strips at all? No, I've never bought one of those. If you do buy them, get the ones that are rated from 1 to 14. Okay. Because this one, which I found at a health food store, only went up to 8. Okay. And most people's pH, uh, who are, have relatively healthy diets, are 10 or, 10 or 11. Occasionally, a rare person is up to 14 uh, alkaline. Mm, that would be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, just and you can just order them online. Yeah, you can get them on Amazon. Mm. Okay. Uh, this one is like seven dollars. I don't know what they cost anymore, but uh, you want to look at the one that has a higher rating. Mm -hmm. Fourteen. How much is yours? <laughs> what? How much is yours? <laughs> oh, mine. Mine rated ten to eleven. Oh. Yeah. Get that. <laughs> I mean, just gonna yeah, be it'd be good to see the progression, like maybe as our diet changes, because we we just we just went to the store yesterday and bought a bunch of fruit because we're we're going to try to eat a lot more fruit. So the, to have those strips would be interesting to see how our levels might change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the whole idea is just it's all for peace of mind. 
I mean, the rest your body's going to tell you, I got to change that or I got to not eat for a couple of days. Um, you'll just, you'll dial that in. What's the beautiful thing about doing a lot of oral therapy is that you pay more attention to your body. You're more involved with your body. Yeah. Right. Definitely. On the days I'm that you're back, pictures of, sorry. I'm taking pictures of the iris, Zach. Maybe that's an idea. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's interesting. It changed significantly, significantly since I started. Oh, wow. Every few weeks, I make a really nice picture of both. That's I, cool. And somebody <clears throat> we, it for me. we have a book on iridology, so it'd be interesting to read on that a little bit more and then see how that changes. That's cool. <laughs> I like that. Do you have to have a special camera or can you just use your cell phone? I've got a very good uh, camera on my new cell phone, so it's really good. The problem is taking the picture without any light reflecting. That's It's a bit tricky, but you'll get the heck, the heck of it. <laughs> you'll get the hang of it. You'll get the hang of it. Beautiful. Uh, last thing I didn't show you is the tongue scraper. It kind of self-explanatory you get these free from the dentist or you can get them all kinds of places and the other thing which i'm not sh i have nothing to show you here is the belly button navel soak we're going to learn about the navel soak and why it's so important and some people have over missed that that one for some reason all right take a breath any questions no let's go over the history real quick and then we're going to go into the Shibambu wisdoms and take it from there. Now, the Damar Tantra, anybody heard of the Damar Tantra? The Damar Tantra comes from the, the Hindu tradition 5,000 years ago. The story basically says that uh, it, was, it was our buddy Shiva who told poverty one day when poverty was outing her mate, her divine consort. And she says, Shiva, how come you don't age? How come you have all this strength and all this ability and you're still sexy? What is your secret? He says, drink of yourself and live and you will know that. So he lays out this nine-year program, how not only you could heal everything, but how to end, how to achieve physical immortality. Now, if we go from 5,000 years ago to 2022, there are some teachings there that still uh, aren't relative to our modern times. And so I look at the, some of the things that people do in this community, like just drink the midstream and toss out the beginning part of the flow and the end of the flow. Have you heard that going around? That's yes. Okay. In the Damar Tantra, one of the verses, uh, Shiva's laying out, he says, you should just take the midstream and avoid the beginning and the end of, of the flow. And then the next verse, he tells you that it's superstition and tradition. He says, because it's symbolic of a snake. A snake could kill you or it could hurt you. And, and that, that may be true back then and in that kind of myth, mysticism. Uh, but what we know today is that every drop is sterile. Every drop is precious. Why would you not use the beginning and the end? So a lot of things you have to do in this journey is to unravel some of the myths and the dogma around this work. Does that make any sense? Yeah. And I, and I still just catch my midstream because it, it just feels right to me. Mm -hmm. And 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 I and I hear the the superstition in it, but I think even just having that even personal ritual that I do, uh, there's something about that to me that I almost have a deeper connection to it too. I guess in a way, and I just do it because it feels right. Right, and that's one of the key points about this water. It's intuitive. Yeah, I just catch all of it. I do actually have a question. Um, earlier you showed that bottle, the glass jar. Is the, that the sediment at the bottom that has, yes, that one. How would you go about using that then from that point on when it's dried and at the bottom of the jar? Scrape what it do you do? And then? Then you can either put it under your tongue in a powdered oh, form. All right. Or you can make it a liquid form. Okay. Cool. You could snort it up the nose. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't I sound would... weird when you're talking about urine. Anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So I probably just like mix some of my urine that I have for that day and swish it around and it'll, yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah. yeah. And get creative. Come up with something. Yeah. New. Chop it up, make lines out of it. And... <laughs> Perfect. Put it in your salad. <laughs> Spread it on your mangoes. <laughs> Whatever you got. Okay. So this is, this is, do you understand that? This is perfect water. This is activated ultra filtered blood plasma water. We're talking about blood. We're drinking now the word Shivambu, S H I V A M B H U, which is the traditional way to spell it has the H at the end because Ambu means water or water Shiva. It also means blood of the Lord because what we're talking about is blood plasma. Interesting enough is that when the first responder takes a, an, an act, a victim in the ambulance to the hospital, what do they put in their veins? Blood plasma, right? We got the same thing, but we've got a concentrated a million, over a million times purification and filtration. Which do you think is more powerful? Yeah. Right. And so you have an internal pharmacy. You have an internal health food store. You have an internal whatever you want to call it and thanks to using this for the last umpteen years and you'll find this may be true for you is a lot of people don't buy supplements anymore for some of us we went through many years thinking that one supplement was better than the other one and one helped me out better than the other one and that one met my nutritional deficiencies better than the other one and you found out it really didn't matter and you found out your body can heal itself so any questions about the Damar Tantra or how uh, that came to be? No. Nope. Oh, good. Um, there are many names for Oren, which I, I mentioned before. The word Oren, uh, I learned from Andrew Norton Weber. Ever heard of him? Mm -hmm. yeah. Andrew Norton Weber was uh, one of the louder voices about uh, urine therapy back in the... Uh, 2000, 2010, he put together the conference in San Diego in 2013, and shortly afterwards, he disappeared. That's a whole other conversation. Um, but he was teaching you that the word urine is a medical term that sounds disgusting. I mean, you associate with that word, you're going to go yuck. So he brought in the word orin, which is softer, it's more inviting, it's a gentle word. And so I, I, I got curious. I'm going like, where have I heard that word before? Now, you've heard of Aquaman? Aquaman? The Marvel comic superhero from the... Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. If you go to Wikipedia and you type in Aquaman, and if you read deeper into the text about Aquaman, you'll discover his real name was Orin. <laughs> no accidents happen on our planet. So... That's where that came from. Um, it's either known as Yujus in Botswana, Ito in Nigeria, Loda Cola uh, is the name that was coined by Dr. Radchak Maloda in India. Love the guy. He's been doing urine therapy for about 53 years, him and his wife. <clears throat> and he, he opened a clinic in India. And there was about three or four urine therapy clinics in India. None yet in the United States. There was one in New Mexico. Uh, in the 70s and 80s and 90s, but it, I can't reach these people. Uh, in the 1400s, the Aztecs used it to heal wounds. I'm just going to go through this really quick so we can get on to the rest of the material. In the 1500s, Magellan, uh, the Magellan crew drank their pee on world cruises. In 1536, the Egyptian medical texts mentioned 50 formulas and recipes or remedies. Many of them included the use of orin. Uh, if you've ever gone into the Bible to look at some of their verses, they talk about drink of your own cistern and you will have mm -hmm. abundance of water flowing through. There's a lot of biblical references if you actually dig into that. Um, 1806, Lewis and Clark noticed Native Americans were bathing in Oren in 1806. And in 1890, there was a book called The 1000 Notable Things that said Oren is a universal and excellent remedy for a multitude of of health challenges. In 1930s, Professor Jean Rodestat of France wrote about adrenal and sex gland hormones present in Oren, 1944. The Water of Life book by John Armstrong came out. You've heard of his book. That mm -hmm. was like that was like the classic. 
uh, he, his book was written in 44. He was using this in 1920s. It wasn't until 1971 it was actually got reprinted, and a lot of people heard about it. Um, now, I'm going to go back to 1917. You guys are going to love this one. In 1917, you ever heard of Rockefellers? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, 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 the badasses. Okay. <laughs> They established the Rockefeller Foundation in 1917 to be the governing body of health care practices and health industry worldwide. It was 1917. They started the propaganda uh, to eliminate all alternative health practices, including urine therapy. So it was up until 1900, 1917. This was common knowledge. So, well, they didn't do such a good job, did they? This is this stuff's taken off. Yeah, well, you 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 can't suppress the truth. You can't <laughs> you can't keep the light from shining. No. <laughs> no. And now in in 2022, there is uh, Doc Mike figure there's about a billion people who are practicing this in over 50 countries. Um, I had found out that the Chinese Urine Association had boasted three million members. Germany had like 10 million people that they knew about every country seems to have the, the documented and undocumented stories. So uh, there's a lot of uh, energy behind doing this practice. Mm -hmm. Take a breath. Any questions? <clears throat> Any questions? No. no. All right, guys. Let's open up the book. Well, you don't have the book. You have the PDF version of it. First, let me explain the Shivamba Wisdoms. Did you guys all get that chart? Brother Sage, sorry, I don't have iCloud. Is there any other way you could send it? Uh, anything's possible? Mm -hmm. I, can, I can send it. Thank did you. Everybody, did everybody else get their copy? Did you get your copy? Uh, no. What page are you on? Well, I haven't, I haven't got there yet. Hold on. I'm going to send this to Ray in another version. Really? Did that work out? All right. Hold on, Ray. Okay, nothing. No problem. All right. Check your email. Okay. Um. I don't know if that will work. It didn't get, give me a choice of whether to use a um, iCloud or a PDF. Okay. Uh, let me see. Keep going. Keep going. Oh. No, sorry. It, it's it's the same. It's iCloud. Okay, I am going to try one more version. Okay, we got it. Oh, you got it. Okay, one out of two yep. ain't bad. <laughs> Thank you for being patient, guys. I'm uploading it. One more time, Ray. Let's see if this will let me get it to you. Thank you. We're sending it as an attachment and not as a cloud up there in the invisible nowhere. Perfect. That's what I was about to say. Yes. I've yet to locate the cloud. Is it under Antarctica? Like, where is the cloud? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the hollow earth? Where do they hide it? <laughs> Yeah, in my experience, I'd go as far as saying urine helps with patience as well. You know, like I'm feeling pretty euphoric. So at any point in time, if you're standing in a line or sitting in traffic, you can just, you know, drink your urine and you'll feel a lot more patient for sure. Yes. And when you drink it, make sure the, the driver next to you sees you. Cheers, road rage. Yeah. Dude, you're yeah. road rage. You need to drink your pee and light up. Come on. <laughs> uh, Ray, panacea. You're ready to see if it came through. Okay. Uh, 
So here's the Shivamba wisdoms while uh, you guys Perfect. are getting Perfect. That's good. While you're getting it together. Um, Tanya is, is listening. Uh, okay. All right. Here's the Shivamba wisdoms. Number one, it's an intuitive medicine, which means <clears throat> don't spend a lot of time calling Brother Sage to figure out how to use your water. People call me up all over the world. Well, when should I drink it? How often should I drink it? Is it okay if I drink it if I'm doing prescription drugs or recreational drugs or if I'm eating meat? Uh, they're asking me all these questions. I'm going, I will tell you how I use it, but it's an intuitive medicine. You have to learn to empower yourself. You'll figure it out. That's your inner guidance system, your intuition. Number one. Number two, <clears throat> Shivambu <clears throat> alchemizes everything it touches. It whatever it touches, it sterilizes, it alchemizes, it changes the vibration. People say, well, if I drink it for oral health because I've got a gum or tooth or tongue, whatever the issue is, and they've swished it in the goggle in the mouth, they say, should I spit it out? <clears throat> I said, what, what did you say? I said, listen, it sterilizes, it neutralizes, it raises the vibration, swallow the darn thing. You got that part? Yeah. Right. And when you're doing an enema and it lands on the floor, you got to laugh because you just disinfected the floor. I mean, your perception is going to shift about how this water is so universal and so useful for everything. All right. Number two, it alchemizes. Number three, it works regardless of your considerations. It doesn't matter if you use a man's, a woman's, an adult, a child, a different race, a different state of health. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, there was this um, guy from India who had uh, gonorrhea. He had that gonorrhea sexual disease, and he drank a uh, four-day-old aged orange with gonorrhea in it, and he healed his condition. He went on to become a urine therapy teacher and did this for 50 years. So people say, well, should I drink it? It's got my drugs in it. I, I have THC in it. I have uh, DMT in it. I have whatever in my water. I said, well, you understand that there's an intelligence that comes with the Shivambu. It has information and energy of what divine order is in a cell. It knows how to regenerate a cell. So if there's something that shows, you got, and also remember that it comes from your plasma. This isn't from your body. It's from the blood filtration. So if it detects a heavy metal, it detects a drug, it detects anything, it uses that information to design the antibody to cure you from it whether you call it COVID or not, whatever you want to call this stuff, your body <laughs> is on the, is your body is your best team player. He's on your side. It wants you to recover. Any questions? Nope. Thank you. All right. No, no questions, but yeah, it does seem like sometimes when I share it, People think they have to wait a certain amount of time to get over what's wrong with them before they start drinking. There's this association of like, oh, but I have a kidney. I have some problems with my kidneys. So I think my kidneys aren't actually doing a good job. So I'll wait until my kidneys, you know, I think my kidneys are better before I start. And it's like, well, it's already perfect. And it's going to help the process of healing what you think may be wrong with the kidney, right? Right. So um, let's go back to that word you mentioned, Ani, patience. When people are coming up to you, she's a, this girl right here, she's a Course in Miracles student. I love her. People, are, When people are coming to you, they're either saying, I love you or help me, I'm scared. That's right out of Course in Miracles. So when someone's coming up to you and say, I got this condition, I got high cortisol levels, I got high... Uh, creatinine levels. I got this, that, and the other thing. They're basing that approach on the medical model. <clears throat> the body's true instincts for healing itself. So sometimes you may want to design your answer to fit their belief systems to give them a break. Mm -hmm. So I tell people like that, well, just for the sake of peace of mind, take in an hour on either side of the drugs. Mm, okay. Say, Don't do oral, but you can do topical on either right. side of we do it. Mm -hmm. You still want to introduce into your bloodstream so you have a much stronger immune system and a chance to combat whatever crap it's doing to your body. Well, thanks for that. And yeah, we do. There's another really cool book there. Pulse and Miracles. <laughs> very, very nice. <clears throat> when it, and when uh, I have something along those same lines, like when, you know, people want to wait or they think like, you know, like, um, 
Uh, I guess for me, like I want to do the aged urine, but I want to do it after I've kind of settled into a better diet before I age it, maybe because of taste too. So. Yeah. Weigh in on that and look at your resistance. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. What if you found out that that was the one thing your body's been waiting for and you're the, uh, yeah. Back? you know, it's the same of seeing that beautiful girl. She's a one of my dreams, but I'm a little hesitant to tell her I love her and get close to her. It's this is you. This is your body. And you get to decide the timing because there's no timeline we're working on here. Yeah. I got you. Take a breath. <sighs> You're in therapy. It does the body good. By the way, <laughs> I own the copyright on this uh, slogan. If you guys want to steal it and run with it, I got the copyright on this slogan. I also went out and got the copyright on this slogan. <laughs> Just drink it. Just drink yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. So, um, very nice. By the way, I have this in a four foot banner that I use to do presentations in a public setting here in Colorado. And I'm willing to loan out the banner if you guys want to have the cojones to go out in the streets and set up and host a table in a public setting. Um, I'll mail it to you and you can always mail it back. Oh, we might hit you up about that. I think we've shared with you we're um, envisioning to do the Mind Body Spirit Festival in Portland in October. So I might message you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. All right, number All right, four. Then. Number four. The word evolve or evolving. <clears throat> I change it in all my writing from the word aged and aging because people have a negative association with it. They think, oh, it's losing its power. You're getting sick. You're going to age and get decrepit and die. I mean, that word just, I mean, you guys know you're always upgrading your words to have the highest vibration, like from understanding to understanding. We're always mm -hmm. doing this. So I use the word evolved and evolving because it really describes who we are and how we are function as human beings as we're constantly learning, growing, evolving. Your water, the moment you collect it, it's evolving. Mm -hmm. It's getting more powerful. It's getting more stem cells. It's getting more antibodies. You have to learn that Shibambu is in a category all unto itself. So to describe the infinite, to, to minds who have limitations, take some doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's an evolving Oren. It constantly will improve itself. If you decide to leave it out, it'll improve the air quality. If you leave it by your bedside, it will aerate. It will be like a, a humidifier by your bedside. There's a lot of things you can do when we get to storing and how to cover it and how to take care of it. We'll have that conversation as well. Uh, number four is saturation dosing. Or is that number five? <clears throat> saturation dosing is basically not just drinking the orange because just drinking the orange is fine. Um, if you're willing to clean up your diet and your lifestyle, that's fine. But I found that when people are doing the protocols, eyes, the ears, the nose, the enema, the foot soak, the fasting, et cetera, et cetera, massages, uh, they get ahead of things building up in their body. Because we don't live in a perfect, pure bubble. We're in a world with EMFs and all kinds of stuff from the air and the water. Everything's been tweaked and, and messed with. And you have people who wear colognes and perfumes and all kinds of synthetic stuff. So um, it's good to just to keep your immune system super strong. And the last point, if I left anything out, I'm sure it's on your chart. The last thing is, <clears throat> the only thing you cannot heal is what you believe you cannot heal. So if you're going to get these people, guys, get ready. Can it heal this? Can it heal that? And everybody seems to think they have the one incurable disease. <laughs> the word incurable means to cure within, in, cure, a bull. Every word, if you look deep enough into it, there is a spiritual or metaphysical explanation of all words. Any questions so far? 
no, no questions. I did check no. the other day on, um, according to the internet, that the most uh, popular ways of uh, passing away in the United States, if you will, is heart disease and cancer. And yeah, obviously, um, your know, therapy has been proven to cure both of these things. Yes and no. <clears throat> I have to do oh. a disclaimer, and I'll wait till Zach gets here. Oh, okay. I'm still listening. This is one just, of this, this, yeah. Go ahead, Annie. He's just having a pee break. Oh, okay. and a coffee break <laughs> as well. All right, I was having a spot of pee. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so let me explain while Shivambu heals some people and doesn't heal everybody and it has to do with the unconscious mind the people who don't change their diet and they're doing urine therapy it's like a band-aid the people are still doing recreational drugs the people are still doing their addictions the people who are still uh miserable unconsciously they're not working out their stuck stuck emotions the people who don't have they have disconnected from source and they're not doing any spiritual practices the people who have unhealthy or toxic relationships it's all connected so yeah. and underneath it all is whether you have a stronger life urge than a death urge if you're committed, <laughs> if you're committed to living this is why i talk about physical mortality a lot uh the people who are secretly miserable and they don't work that out. Their pain body is so activated. Their trauma is so present that the, it's socially acceptable to die. I mean, it's not really socially acceptable to live forever yet, or we'd be having that conversation. Mm -hmm. So the people who don't work out their pro their problems or don't work out their case and solve their case, uh, the Shivambo won't save them. Mm -hmm. We worked really hard to save VJ in the hospital. We we snuck in twelve year old urine. We fed it to him. We I gave him baths with it, uh, enemas with it. We tried. We he got out of there. Then he came back in. He kept slipping back and forth, and at the very end, his soul says, "I've had enough of this crap," and he left. Of course, we found out that they shot him with remdesivir three times without consulting his wife, who had medical attorney, uh, and that's what really killed him. Wow. Okay. So we know that the medical system is not for people. Yes. So Zach, uh, what you missed yeah. was I was sharing that urine, uh, Shibambo heals some people and it doesn't heal anybody, everybody. Right. It's based on our belief systems. Right. And if you really, and this is something you need to consult with your, with your clients and your students. How serious are you about doing what you need to do to get better? Will mm. you do the work? Will you commit to do right. it? Will you build a lifestyle, a wellness lifestyle that lasts for a hundred years or as long as yeah. you can? Yeah. If you're not willing to do the work, <clears throat> it's a lot harder to recover and get your health back. Right. Yeah. It's definitely that holistic approach. Yeah. Right. And you can see which people in the water family are the most joyous and playful spirit like Anne and and Monica and, and Tuche mm -hmm. and all these people. What a joyful spirit all these people are. <laughs> so um, any questions so far? We're going to take a break in about 30 minutes. It could be a pee break. It could be whatever. Any questions so far about what we've covered? No. no. Okay. Page... I don't know how to translate it into the PDF, but I'm just going to read it, and you guys will get back to it somehow. It's page 198 in the book, and it's in what chapter is this with? Chapter 15, if that helps. All right. Funny PDF. <laughs> PDF. Your sense of humor is pistastic. Thank you. <laughs> I love it when all these guys in the water family are coming up with the pee puns. They're getting the swing of things. So Shivambu is an intuitive medicine. I talked about it. I'm just going to read it. Whether you find it in time or not, let's just keep moving today because we're going to do that. All right. Shivambu is an intuitive water or medicine. Once you choose this lifestyle or it chooses you, and you absolutely know what UT is doing for you, you will never quit the practice or look for something better. <clears throat> and how many times in our life did you go, now I found something better? 
I'm going to try something else. And how many people were in that, been there, done that kind of generation? I have not looked back in 26 years, 28 years. I'm not looking for anything. And all the guys in the water family that are selling me the newest supplement and the new EMF protection device and the Zen cleanse and all this other stuff, I said, God bless you. I don't need it. Thank you. How and well you practice using your intuition. Let's go back. After gaining enough experience practicing AUT and you're sure that you're ready, students and clients will seek you out. How well do you practice using your intuition? According to Merriman Webster Dictionary, quote, intuition is an ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. It is the power or faculty of attaining direct knowledge of, or cognition without evident rational thought and interference. For all the people still looking for scientific evidence, peer review stuff and all that stuff, their intuition is their evidence and your direct experience is your evidence. Do you feel confident with your intuitive abilities? Intuition is a tool. It is only as good as the person who uses it. Start today, right where you are, and practice being more mindful of using intuition. <clears throat> mastering the use of intuition, along with mastering conscious breathing, is not only pivotal to your well-being and, and your clients, but also to everyone you know and will cross paths during your life. Breathe. I'm on page 199. I don't know if the numbers match up, but let's keep going. Know that your intuition, instantly giving you quick and ready insight, is always at your service to guide and keep the session on course. Assist in making good choices, in giving advice, suggesting lifestyle changes, and co-creating the best sessions with every client. Remember, you are an instrument, a bridge, or guide, or messenger for your client to do his or own his or own his or her own work with your assistance and cooperation. <clears throat> remember, here's a point to remember. Your work is your work. Their work is their work. Don't do their work for them. You're not here to rescue, to save, to improve any being on this planet. You're here to guide them back to them. And you can give them the tools and the resources to do that. The, the trap that people get into is they call themselves a healer. Have you met some people like that? Yeah. Yeah, they, they just stole the power away from the client. They took the responsibility out of their hands. So you're a facilitator. Just remember that in case your mind goes, oh, I'm a healer. Look at me. I'm a healer. <laughs> How's that working for you? Um, <laughs> all right. Um, your work is your work and their work is their work. Remember, you are an instrument, a bridge, or a guide. Your work is not to save, protect, improve, or change anyone, especially clients. The sooner a client can throw away their psychological or mental crutches, concerns, doubts, and fears, and take responsibility for their self-health care, the faster they will heal and grow. People always heal themselves. Most clients, one more page and then we're done with this part. Most clients come to you out of desperation, have given up hope, and faith in the medical system and are looking to you and UT as their last chance to save their life, reclaim their health, and have any quality of life. I have this client from India. He's got the thing going on with his um, uh, creatinine levels. And every time he calls me, I give him advice. I tell him how to relax and breathe and do the protocols. And he keeps fixating on my creatinine levels. And when I go to the doctor, it's still high. I mean, creatinine levels. I said, are you doing the practices? Are you doing any breath work? Are you laughing more? Are you relaxing more? And he keeps mm -hmm. fixating on the medical jargon and the poisonous ideas that the doctors give him. I said, you need to get off that track, go outside and play, and then let's see what happens when you're not fixated on it. <laughs> He's still videoing me trying to get a different answer. I said, it's the same answer. You've got to learn to be grateful and appreciate what you have and, and work with that. So you might get some people that are really desperate and you're going to stay really centered and patient, aren't we? Yes. Because <laughs> right in the middle of all their panic is their solution, but they're not looking there. All right. You may at times when being approached to new clients feel like a first responder answering to emergency calls, which can tend to scare you. After facilitating more and more sessions, this becomes second nature to you. You got this? You got this. You're going to have people come to you, Anne and Zach, each and every one of you, that it sounds more over your head than you can imagine. You say, it's not for me. I can't do this. I'm not equipped. I'm not trained to do this. 
You want to bet? You're as equipped as you can stay calm and centered with them, and you can you can help them off the tree when they're the cat that's stuck up in the tree, and you're the fireman help bring them down. <laughs> that's me a lot. So you'll be in that situation. You'll just go, "All right, spirit, give me the words. Show me what to do." And it'll always work out, regardless of your mind getting a little bit spooked. Have you come across anybody like that? Yeah, I've had a lot of um, people who are quite spooked, and it's quite the emergency situation kind of thing. So <laughs> it's mentioned um, even for us to do our own spiritual work so that we can remain in a state of calm when um, things seem a bit spooky is really important too. And then we can clearly communicate the message. And also, like you said before, like I tend to get out the way and just let spirit speak so that I don't even have anything to do with it really, yeah. um, which has worked out well in my experience here. Yeah. Good, good. Then your angel wings will work this time. Spread them out and start flying up. By the way, the, the, the secret of angels being able to fly is that they take themselves lightly. <clears throat> hint, hint, hint. All right, let's finish up this chapter here. Let's see if you've got any questions for me. After facilitating more and more sessions, it's become second nature to you. Now would be a good time to set this book down, take several deep connected breaths, go recenter, get calm, go pee if you have to, perhaps start shaking the body, take a shower, dance, do yoga, sing, yell, chant, skip, run, walk, or whatever. A lot of people who come into your life are paralyzed. They're in no movement. They're not breathing. They're scared. They're panicking. Right? Don't get sucked into that. You can help them out more than you realize. Uh, these are powerful tools to use either during a session or any time during the day when you feel stuck, anxious, concerned, confused, and uncreative or in no movement. Usually when people are in that state of mind, they are not breathing. Ray, if you're anxious and nervous yes. and scared, if you're anxious and nervous and scared and worried and concerned, and you get into that state of mind, check in with your breath. Okay. Because there's a high probability we're not breathing. And when you shut down your breath, you cannot access either peace or solutions. No. <clears throat> Breathe, exhale, repeat. Keep in mind that on this path, we give a lot of thanks to the golden blood plasma water for constantly cleaning, purifying, and washing away impurities in the body, the mind, while leaving us feeling fresh, clear, calm, balanced, and sane. Mm -hmm. You know what the definition of insanity is, right? Doing the same things over again, trying to expect different results. Yeah, those are the people who are yo-yoing on the food game. And that's one of the things that uh, I've seen a lot of people in the urine therapy community being able to break free from, and that's food slavery. Mm. This is the power of fasting because you get to take a mental vacation from all your neurosis and dogma and attachments and addictions to food. And when you can step away and food's no longer uh, running you either as a reward or a punishment and you're eating for pleasure, where does that lead you to? Fruit. Yeah. <laughs> if, you took, if you took two plates of food and put it in front of kids, one is vegetables, meat, or whatever, and the other one's a bowl of fruit. They'll go to fruit first time every time. They are not yeah. going to have to think it through. Yeah. So where did we get off? Yeah. Who knows? All right, page 60. I remember when I was a uh, raw foodist, and, and, you know, then, then, I ate something that I really enjoyed, but up for it and then i and then i'd be like oh well now i gotta compensate and you kind of go back and forth and that's actually weird in the schedule though because you know i have you're breaking up zach yeah. zach yeah you, you now that's better you were you're were losing reception just a minute ago oh maybe 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 it was not picking up do you, do you have a lot of bars on your uh service on your top of your window yeah we do Okay, well, now you sound good. Okay. So here's what happens is people get all these great intentions and their high hopes and they want to be a raw foodist and they want to be a, uh, 
This is what happened to me. 1977, I joined a raw food community and everybody's going, this is the only way to go. And I did a lot of wheatgrass juice and fasting and cleansing and animals and blah, 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 and really nailed it down. And I was feeling the best I did. And then the community disbanded because there was some outbreak of hepatitis. And it was a raw food restaurant with a, with a, with an organic garden in the backyard, 24-hour restaurant. Nobody's ever done that before. And then everybody left because there was hepatitis and I went home and healed myself. But what happens is if you're not in that supportive community, you tend to not have the discipline and you can slip back to eating all the crap, you know, and then you get to beat yourself up and you yo-yo back and forth until you get your discipline down and you cleared out a lot of that stuff in your mind. Then you can do this stuff. Not everybody can go cold turkey and just give up the American diet. <laughs> if you ever tried that, just give up the way everybody eats and go your own way. It takes some discipline. All right, so saturation dosing. It's from chapter. Uh, what chapter is that? I think it's chapter nine. Chapter seven. There's a section called saturation dosing with AUT. Anybody find it? Ray, did you find it? No, just looking now. It's a little tricky when Which you... is it? Page 60? Page 60, book form, PDF, chapter yeah. 7, is that what I said? Found it. Yeah, it's chapter 4, oh, page 44 on the PDF. Okay, would somebody like to read? All right. Anybody who's not covering their mouth, would someone like to read? <clears throat> if the internet allows me, I'll, I'll read. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> um, just start from the beginning. Start from the beginning, and I might point out a few things, or if anybody wants to interrupt yeah. for a question, you're welcome to do that. It's, um, chapter 7, UT Protocols. Introducing saturation dosing, SIP looping, and new discovered between 2019 and 2020. All right, you want to, you want to fast forward to uh, number two. Number two. Uh, okay. Number two. Page 60. All right. Page 60. Page 60. The practice of increasing the oral and topical uses. Okay, saturation okay. dosing. Okay. And the practice of increasing the oral and or topical uses of orin. The saturation point is an arbitrary attempt to reach orin capacity at its fullest or limit. Saturation dosing is your best preventation, prevention and defense of an illness or a compromised immune system. It gives you a fighting change to get ahead of any virus, sickness, contamination, or compromise to your health. Saturation dosing is gaining in popularity as a preventative protocol, especially when started before the onset of any illness. Considering that the body is continually regenerating and purifying itself, it's an oxymoron to believe that we could ever reach the point of being full to the max with nutrients from Orin. Keep in mind that Orin, with its 3,000 plus identified micronutrient sized substances and more yet to be discovered, it would be virtually impossible to determine daily minimum requirements and a serving size for everyone. This is why it is clearly understood that Orin therapy is an intuitive medicine or water. The purpose of saturation dosing is to flood the bloodstream, body, and cells with the maximum concentration of vital nutrients in a shorter time than it takes with just one glass or serving per day. It has been a widely held belief and practice that a glass a day of Orin meets the average person's minimum health needs. Why stop there? Question. Do you, do, you yep. know, do you have any newbies in your life that are just starting to practice? Not really. Uh, it's just mostly us. I mean, we we, we bring it up to my family. Um, you know, my, my dad's kind of asked Anae some questions, and but no one's really wanted to start. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're open minded about it, but not to the point of actually experimenting with it or even just trying it. And, mm -hmm. and we've we've. We, we try not to push, you know, because you can only say something so many times and it's like, okay, and then it becomes a joke. And then it's like, okay, we're joking. And then what? 
Yeah, there's a lot of pee <laughs> jokes going around. Uh, Our house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the reason I bring that up because I have some students who are bragging that they got up to four ounces a day. You know, I'm drinking two liters a day. So uh, everybody has to find, you know, where they step it up. Wait, four ounces? Yeah, he's drinking four or five ounces, and he thinks that's a big deal. Yeah, that's that's nothing. <laughs> right, right. But it's all perspective. Right. And yeah, so yeah. He's better off than not doing anything. Mm -hmm. True. And he just got smart when he was telling me his knees are in pain, and he might want to have to go to Mexico to get stem cell injections. I said, do you want to spend $10,000, or you want to just rub some pee on your knee, and it's free? And so... He not only did that and the pain went away, but I walked in to use, we have a community house I live in and I go use a bath and there's a wine gobbler with urine in it on the side of the bathtub. And I'm just going, yes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just just keep telling people that. Uh, keep reading, Zach. Thank you. All right. Um, this may be the case for those urine therapy devotees who have been drinking and applying Orin for many years with the addition of other health practices like fasting, fruitarianism, raw veganism, enemas or colonics, qigong, tai chi, meditation, sun gazing, one meal a day, exercise, daily conscious deep connected breathing, clearing limiting beliefs, and getting lots of hugs and conversations that matter. Add the word Admitted. massage. Add the word massage. If you can't get a massage, you're in trouble. I mean, I get one. <laughs> I'm getting one every two weeks, and I'm working on getting two a week. But nice. you've got to be able to be in contact with humans or something. I've been a massage. Yeah. Therapist. There's my table right there. I've been doing this 42 years, and we are we are disconnected with humans, and we're touch starved. So yeah. to get a massage is not just the physical manipulation and the loosening up of you know all the tightness. But we need to have our feathers and our emotions soothed. Yeah. So get mm -hmm. totally. from each other or wherever you get it. Breathe. Very important. Yeah. Let's go to Barbados and I'll we'll work on Ray. <laughs> you come. We are already in Barbados. We are. We are. <laughs> you share uh, in the space here. Uh, Zach, wait, hold on a minute. We're going to end when you get to that picture of the calendar on the next two pages. Okay. <clears throat> take a Lots break. of hugs and conversations that matter. Okay. Committed health enthusiasts who are continually using the UT protocols have gained an experience and a knowing with um, AUT stands for urine therapy. auto urine therapy that gives them great certainty in its healing power. Those just starting AUT using minimum doses are improving at a snail's pace, playing it safe, often not changing anything about their diet or lifestyle and experiencing incremental health improvement. Education, education and experience using AUT is a major influence and source of inspiration for the practice and results. AUT teachers or authors may not have taught them anything different. So now would be a great time to bring saturation dosing into the conversation with your water buddies. It's a great time for you and all students of this manual and of AUT to start practicing saturation dosing and or increasing what you are doing with Orin therapy until you have a direct experience of this protocol. Having the understanding and confidence in teaching this UT model to others will make a big difference for them. This choice brings days of feeling good and days of not feeling well with varying degrees of feelings in between. To experience a quantum leap in healing and reclaiming your well-being requires discipline, motivation, courage, and faith in yourself as well as the process. How to begin UT saturation dosing. Start by putting aside all of your concerns about increasing the consumption of Orin. Trust the teachings in this manual and give 100% of your determination and energy into succeeding with AUT. Scheduling dates and times and designing a plan of action helps when you see it laid out on a calendar for daily and weekly use or print out something like this one below and write in the protocol details. Okay, good. So this calendar, I designed one to see if the water family would embrace it. Some did, some didn't, but the whole idea is most people uh, lack discipline. 
And so to have a structure laid out and coded, mm -hmm. you'll know that you're going to fast on Monday. You're going to do a foot soak on Tuesday. You're going to do eye rinses every day. Mm -hmm. You're going to take a bath on Friday, whatever it is. If you can set that up on a 28 day calendar, it's a lot easier. You don't have to think about what do I need to do today. So that's up to you if you guys ever want to do a calendar version of your practices and your protocols. Any questions? No. Any comments? Any feedback? <clears throat> I do like the idea of the calendar. Me, I'm pretty abstract and I like to just like not organize anything, but I can see the way that I would use that with clients for sure to print something out and um, maybe, you know, yeah, I look like. at their schedule and um, just to have that in front of you to see how easy it can actually be to incorporate UT in your life, even if you're living a hectic life. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to see that on a calendar. Yeah. Right. And a real simple thing to do is if you have a, a bathroom, old, old style bathroom cabinet is where you had the mirror and it would open up and inside would be the shelves, mm. right? <laughs> so you could put it on the inside of the mirror, you could put it on the wall. Now what I do, my practice every morning is I've got a cup, oh, I guess it's about four to six ounces of it uh, from the night before. So first thing in the morning, boom, snort it up the nose, pour it over the eyes, put it in the ears. You can knock out six or seven protocols first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you if you go into the bathtub, uh, are you guys bathers or shower people? Uh, both. A bit of both. Depends on <laughs> the weather. Okay. I'm going to explain why it alchemizes your bath here in just a second. Every people going, why well, didn't have chlorine and fluoride and all that crap? They put in municipal water. I said, oh, not until you get the orange in there. It's a whole new water. This is why peeing in the bathtub is therapeutic. It's a lot of fun anyway. Um, <laughs> so while you're standing in the bath and the bath is filling up, then you start doing your protocols. You, you know, pour some on your hair, rub it in your hair. You can massage yourself while you're standing up. You, you can drink it and you can put it in your belly button, all kinds of different places. Uh, and then as you get in the bath, your bot the bath water has been transformed into a homeopathic orin water. So in essence, you're doing an orin bath without having to collect eight to 10 gallons of orange. Yeah, I, I take, I try to take a bath like once a week at the end of my work week, you know, and, and I use Epsom salts a lot and I have peed in the bath as well. And, and, and then I usually rinse off anyway, cause I'm, I'm really salty from the salt bath. And mm -hmm. so yeah, to soak in that. And I think, I think the Epsom salts actually can help the orange absorb even deeper because the salt really opens up all the the pores and everything and then then the orin comes in and you know it's like it's almost like being at a hot spring and you get that lithium high or <laughs> yeah, yeah and you know what epsom salt really is um magnesium right right so if you think about the magnesium in the water or the magnesium in your orin uh, people take magnesium to relax their muscles, to relax their bowel function, to help the heart, to help loosen up all kinds of tightness. So you've everything. Got everything. <laughs> yeah. So um, any questions? She went and got some more in. I had a big <laughs> release. <laughs> I think it's all this talk, isn't it? It's all this talk. So we're going to take a pee break. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off, turn off the recording. Bada bim, bada recording off. Even think that way. And you have Durian. Durian, I had no. I, I, I'm not, I haven't seen any here. All right. Well, they, they look like it? sour socks, right? Well, they're they're this type. They have little spines around the edges. You open yeah. it up. And there's four quadrants with this custard inside, and it has ah. the most. It has the most. Awful smell, and people call it stinky <laughs> fruit. But it has the best combination of of fat and fruit and carbohydrates, and some call it a perfect food. Oh wow! Okay, it sounds like a sugar apple. Mm -hmm. But the sugar apple doesn't have that smell. Um, but it's it's like custard inside. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and dragon fruit kind of has a custard uh, lining inside it with all those little black uh, seeds. Right, my Okay, Mama's gonna do some. some right. Zach, what were you gonna say? It's, it's hard to hear you. It's hard to hear you. My cousin's in fruit, and uh, I remember them opening it up in the house, and I I could smell it, and he was like, "Well, the the taste is a lot different than the smell," but I I, I couldn't get past the smell. Just so you know, your reception goes in and out. Okay. Uh, if you need to tweak anything, what some people do, and you may not be in that situation, is they get off the call and then come right back on the call and it reboots itself. You want to say hello to everybody? I'm just going to close a few. So guys, we were talking about healing autism. And you Ooh. might know some people who have autistic children who most people know by now it was as a result of the jab. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Fauci. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> we have we have an autistic 18-year-old uh, in California who's under the care and guidance of one of my, she was my organizer, we're at Oceanside, but she's also a UT teacher. And uh, she got him drinking his urine. She got him doing foot soaks. She massages him, and we have a very strong intention and desire that not only he heals autism, but he becomes the poster child, so we can uh, let the world know that this is curable. Mm. By the way, it was Doc Mike Wittort, 20 years ago. He took the Medical Association of Chicago to court. Bye, CT. He won the case, which basically says nobody has the right to use the word cure and own a word and so he says i can use the word cure and you cannot you cannot sue me or take me to court because i used a word and so he spent about he spent millions of dollars to prove to the court system that anyone can use the word cure that's great oh just in case someone gives you flack about that doc might said it's okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back. Uh, we've got another hour, and uh, anything you want to discuss before we move forward? No. We're watching all kinds of conditions, from Alzheimer's to autism to diabetes. We've got uh, people who've healed multiple sclerosis, uh, AIDS, COVID, you name it. It's being healed cancer. Um, and those are all just labels and identities that doctors throw at us. Uh, did you ever read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz? Love it. Great set of books. Great soul. Good teacher. So he says that if you go to the doctor and they give you a diagnosis and label it, they are practicing black magic. They are giving he you used a... to be a doctor himself, didn't he? Uh, well, he's from a, a Toltec uh, tradition from his country, but he, if anything, he would be a curandero, considered a shaman, mm. natural doctor. And so he says when they label you with a disease, they're, they're giving you a form of auto-suggestion and hypnosis, and if you go in agreement with you, it has a life force. So when you find yourself, when you listen to people and they say, well, I've got cancer i've got diabetes i've got da 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 you got to tell them like who has what which part of any of this stuff <laughs> which of the eye has this disease because it, you don't have a disease your body's either regenerating purifying or going through whatever cycle it's in but we don't understand it because the medical model, model teaches only symptomology and not prevent not down to the to the uh, cause they never talk about the cause this is why doctors are great for cutting and are great for medicating, but they don't know about healing. That's why it's called a practice, isn't it? It's practicing. Yes. Yeah. They all took the <laughs> All words. They never could understand why people were healed in their practice. People get healed in a hospital and they walk out of the hospital because they had remission and it was healed and they don't understand because their mind doesn't have a place to hold that. Narrow bandwidth. Okay, page um, 32, 30, page 32 to 39. 
Chapter 5, Research and Clinical Studies. And the reason I wrote my book is because all the books on the subject uh, ended in 1994 until folks like myself and Harry Matadine and Dave Phillips and everybody else came on the scene. All they talked about was data, research, technology, testimonials, nutrients. They did not discuss the emotional counterpart. They did not tell you how to talk to uh, doubters and naysayers. They left a whole conversation. So I brought this up to modern times so we can actually address it, introduce it to people, hopefully off the internet. So this chapter is uh, regarding research and clinical studies. And would anybody like to read it? Okay, I'll read it. Thank you for volunteering. This is oh, I'll read. Tanya, thank you. Thank you for doing that. I'll read. Chapter five: Research and clinical studies. All human beings have drank their own urine while growing in a body, while growing a body in the womb of their mother. In the natural biological heaven of the human reproduction process, inside the maternal womb is where the formation of our body took place. The first step was the formation of mother cells, the heart, brain, kidneys, bones, basic organs, nerve cells that receives that and transmits, and above all the coordinate, coordination between sensorial organs and the incredible balance of genetic information cell product, reproduction, and the bioenergetic stimulant. Inside the maternal womb, we are in a complete peace, comfort and harmony, preparing ourselves to come out to a new life in the exterior world. A human's perfect time on earth may be during the gestation period. Orin therapy is literally a gift from God or Shiva. It is a built-in part of our nature. There's no human on earth that has not taken his or her own urine. In our first 23 to 30 days, we will start peeing into the amniotic, amniotic liquid. Through the umbilical cord, the baby does receive special nutrients such as immunoglobulin and vitamins, but most of all oxygen from the mother. When the baby reaches the age of five months, they urinate from 400 to 500 milliliters. Each day inside the amniotic sac, and between eight to nine months, the baby urinates 20 to 30 times every 24 hours. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. 98% <laughs> <laughs> of the composition of the urine is water. 1% of its elements consisting of cells and filament, filaments. And the other 1% is made up of more than one thousandth of healing chemical substances in the form of ions, electrically charged atoms. Powerful substances found in milligrams that carry the genetic information and energy of what works well or not in the body. <laughs> A fetus swallowing its own urine is not only sterile and safe, it's essential for proper biological development. Mm -hmm. A disease in fetal or in production or excretion can result in a reduced amount of amniotic fluid. Yeah, quick it answer here. Quick answer. Most people will agree that it's sterile when it's in your body, when it's in mom's belly, that urine is sterile in the body. So why is it not sterile? Or it's sterile while it's in your bladder, but when it leaves the body, it's not sterile. I never yeah. really understand that. Okay, it's sterile in this environment, but it's in another environment. It's still the same liquid. 
You see where I'm mm-hmm. going with that? So people mm-hmm. don't use logic and critical thinking a whole lot. So mm-hmm. you have to like spell it to mm-hmm. spell it out to them. Mm-hmm. All right, Tanya, keep going. Mm-hmm. They're worrying that a baby produces in utero doesn't pose any risks, even when the fetus consumes its fists. It's not only normal, but also healthy for a baby's body to run organ system functions, as well as develop swallowing, breathing, and other actions needed for thriving. Your body creates an ideal environment that protects the baby as it develops. Temperature control, nutrients, stem cells, antibody protection, and more are just a few of the automatic benefits a baby gets in the womb. The germ situation isn't comparable to, or for example, a toddler putting anything they find in their mouths. Mm-hmm. While floating inside the womb in their urine and an amniotic fluid, babies open their eyes and can see light from, uh, from the outside. <laughs> Although a baby's eyes can see light starting around week 16, their peers aren't fully formed until about 20. Week 20. Their peepers aren't fully formed until about week 20. The eyes first open uh, between week 26 and 28. Their vision is rather blurry, but they can see and respond with a flutter of activity to bright sources of light like the sun or a flashlight pointed at a woman's belly. Oh, wow. Thanks to pee getting into their ears, as their hearing develops, babies can hear more than we realize. Babies are bathing their eyes in urine and observing their water world with open eyes while using its time to learn how to breathe and use their lungs, <laughs> babies are amniotic fluid filled with urine up their nose. It's thought they can smell food too. Mm. We already have experienced drinking urine through the nose from the beginning of our lives and just forgot. Mom getting outside helps a baby's eyes develop and reduce the risk of a few eye disorders. When you drink or topically apply urine, you can take in your own free auto vaccine, unlike any man-made vaccine. (laughs) Urine has no side effects, harmful chemicals or toxic materials in it. In other words, urine is part of the beginning of life and we literally grew up with it built into our nature it's a wonderful cycle of life that should never be interrupted nobody can live without water for that reason water is a sacred element nobody can live without air for that reason air is a sacred element nobody can live without fire For that reason, fire, including the sun, is a sacred element. Nobody can live without taking the orange inside. For that reason, orange is a sacred element. Mm -hmm. The medical applications of orange and its constituents have been tested, discussed, researched, and utilized to such an extent throughout the 20th century that it seems incredible that almost none of us, including the majority of our doctors and medical administrators, have ever heard anything about it. But again, the reason for this is not entirely a mystery, even though the success of urine therapy was reported long before in the 1900s, 20th century medical researchers, doctors, and the public turned their interests away from traditional natural medicines. More? Um, Any questions about um, the research? Now, it's interesting that in 1971, NASA published the composition of urine 
and listed 3,000 components. Uh, a lot of the research that was taken place by the government that we found through our research on the internet is posted at the Shivambu Hut uh, and probably some other websites and social media apps. So if, if anybody's looking for research, peer review stuff, stuff from NASA, stuff from the government, from the AMA or wherever, uh, it's it, we can find it for you for those people who need it. Uh, Shivambu, I'll, I'll take it. We're going to do two more pages here and then go on to the next topic. <clears throat> Shivambu and yoga are rejuvenating. We're on page 37 if you're following along. AUT is the perfect medical solution for the millions of Indians who cannot afford medical treatment. I have been practicing it on multiple occasions. It is a profound medicine. Actually, it is one of the ancient yogic techniques called Amaroli Kriya. Shivambu and yoga is practiced together. It is very effective and rejuvenating. This was a former defense minister, governor of India. It was, it was Prime Minister uh, Maraji Desai in 1970, something or other, who was on 60 Minutes with Dan Rather. And he told Dan Rather, this was, a, this was big stuff back in those days in, in public television, that he drinks his urine. And that's how he lived so long. And, and Desai lived to be 99. And at one point he says, you know, you people in the West could really benefit from this practice. Would you be willing to drink your pee? And Dan Rather says, I, I'll decline it this time. Thank you for asking. <laughs> he had the courage to present that on, on national television. So uh, you will also discover at the Shivambu Hut, we have listed all kinds of celebrities, boxers, Hollywood celebrities, television stars, all kinds of people who have come publicly, Brad Pitt, Madonna, whether you believe she's real or not, um, all kinds of people have come forward and said they do urine therapy. They put it on their feet, they put it in their hair, in their face. So whether that gives validity or not, it shows that it's in the public domain. People are paying attention, not just Bear Grylls. <laughs> that dude. Okay, so horn therapy, I'm still on the page 37. Horn therapy was moved out of the home and doctor's offices and into the oblivion of research laboratories where, unfortunately, it is being stored until the world is ready to hear about it, which is right now. UT largely disappeared from public use at the turn of the 20th century. The knowledge of the therapy is currently hidden in the medical journals and research reports that people and doctors in general never see. Orange ingredients are simply isolated and converted into unrecognizable medicine and cosmetics. You've heard about a lot of the uh, beauty care and skincare products. They have urea in it. Mm -hmm. And so that the public doesn't catch on, they hide it under the scientific word carbamide. So if you look at beauty care and skin care products and you see the word carbamide, you know it's really in there. They're very good at disguising things. Yeah, and in fertilizers too. Like mm -hmm. we don't need to buy any fertilizer. I just make a mix and put it on the garden and the plants love it. <laughs> well, here at in Sanctuary Garden, we just have the we have piss time. We the guys go out and back and have a talk and piss on the compost and go. How's your day going? Oh, pretty good. How's your day going? <laughs> it's a pretty relaxing atmosphere. Uh, again, this situation is most likely the result of two factors. Modern medical researchers are primarily oriented towards finding strong, monetary, profitable chemical magic bullets to cure quote cure symptoms, not the cause of specific diseases, and not towards discovering natural medicines which augment the body's natural capacity to heal. Most medical researchers must answer to Big Pharma and are contractually bound not to reveal the results of their research until the research can become profit-making medical therapy patented by the company who funded the research. You probably knew that. Also, medical researchers tend to devote their research to extremely specialized branches of medicine. And these separate departments of medicine don't generally communicate their findings to departments outside of their own research fields. So the urologist, for instance, who, dis who converted, who discovered that Oren prevents and heals urinary tract infections might publish their findings to other urologists, but a doctor in general practice would probably not come in contact with these studies on the importance of orin in bladder or kidney infections. 
compartmentalizing. You've heard that in military terms. <clears throat> You're in, you don't need to know it's not in your pay raise or your scale, whatever. The public and most practicing doctors today consider Orrin to be nourished nothing more than a body waste. But many medical researchers know that in reality, Orrin is an enormously comprehensive and powerful medical substance. Now that you get to read, many scientists and doctors know, but haven't told us about the amazing curative effects of Orrin therapy with its anecdotal studies, stories of healing and survival. Regardless if Orrin is being generally ignored, ridiculed, or written off as another theory, people are learning the truth and reading healing stories that are taking on significance that can't even doctors can ignore. If you guys, um, I don't know if you saw my interview with Channel 7 and Channel 9 out of Denver. This was in 2018. Uh, one of the camera guys he brings his uh, lady with the microphone, the journalist and the camera guy, comes to my apartment. And my assistant, who's also in the Shivamo organization, could you mute your mic? Oh, that would be Ray. Sorry. No problem. So they come in, um, we're doing Tai Chi, and then I drink on camera, and I show them all the protocols, and they had a beautiful piece, right? Great, well done. Last 30 seconds, they bring on the doctor to demonize it and say, no, no, it's a waste product. These guys are crazy cultists, blah, blah, blah. But what they didn't realize is that that, that story has over 50 to 70 hits and views right now, and it has helped the cause more than they realize. So any any story, any press is good press. Now look what they did to Harry Matadine out in UK. They were trying to demonize his work. Oh, he's some kook who's drinking his age during. Come to find out that's really helped his book sales and it's really helped get the word out. You can't stop the light from coming up. And we've we have had the the beautiful alliance of doctors who are putting their name to this movement, like Dr. Group. You heard of Dr. Edward Group. We've got um, Amanda Vollmer and Kate Stillman, Megan McDonald, uh, naturopaths from Canada, uh, Lee Sampson, who represents the Native Americans of Canada. Uh, more and more of these people are coming. Dr. Gabriel Cousins, who went to India and did urine fast. These guys are, are deciding to not worry about their reputation and their practice and come forward and say, hey, listen, you got to know this stuff. I don't care who hears it. You have to hear it. So you're going to hear more and more outspoken advocates showing up on the scene. Any questions and comments? No, no questions. It is very inspirational to find more and more people, especially doctors who are speaking out about it, though. It's great. <laughs> I think more people are going to be turning to it too, especially in the case of food shortages or, or medication shortages. Or... Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking about that more and more. Uh, Troy Casey was talking about it when he was doing his YouTube version. He was calling himself uh, Dr. P.P. Shibambu, and uh, he was practicing urine therapy. I got an interview with him and uh, he would turn away from the camera and pee in a jar and then turn around and go, okay, I'm ready. I have mine right here. <laughs> have you heard of a guy named uh, Rodney Lavoyer? Rodney Lavoyer was on the Survivor television show, the reality TV show. And he realized that there was a lot of dark sides of Hollywood and the pedophilia and all that insanity that happened. So he walked away from this career uh, that could have taken him all kinds of places, and he turned his attention to bringing urine therapy to the world. And so yeah. if you ever pick up some of his videos, he decided to give up that. Now, Troy Casey was also in Hollywood. He was a uh, Versace uh, model. He's a handsome guy, and he walked away from that career because he saw the dark side of it. So it's nice that people are honoring the truth and and speaking up about it. Mm, yeah, for sure. It so, helps with sleeping peacefully at night as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're living your true self. Yeah, and not selling out. Yeah. Which way too many people have. Now, people have worried about me because I'm I'm all over the place. You might have noticed. I'm on all kinds of social media apps and television and radio, and I've been on like 48, 50 interviews in the last five years. 
and I'm not worried because uh, I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of the golden energy around me. I've got a lot of help with Masters and Babaji and Merlin and Saint Germain and my own guides, and my field is very strong. I practice immortality, and right now you're in therapy so off their radar. They're yeah, compared to everything else. They're, they're, yeah, I know. They're too busy selling uh, fear porn. Yeah. And uh, people are too busy with all the distractions to even think about uh, that we might be a threat to their establishment, which we aren't anyway. We're complimentary. However, this when this does catch on, when we talk about the future of Shivambu, uh, we may have uh, hospitals go out of business. Uh, who knows? Uh, doctors might have to end up being urine therapists. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go to page, let's see here, page 25. No, we're going to go to page 6, page 40. Chapter 6, the whole body-mind connection. I started to hint on this earlier that the way to achieve optimum wellness is to design a wellness lifestyle that gives you the best results and that you keep your commitment to it the rest of your life. You tweak it as you go. But when you we find a way to keep the balance between mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual, then you won't be taken down by the latest fear tactic, the fear demic or whatever else people are throwing at you. And if germ theory is real, we haven't proven the germs are real yet. So I, I always get a laugh out of people going, well, there's this virus going around. I said, there's not even a virus that exists. So where do you come up with this germ theory? And the, the terrain theory has become popular thanks to Dr. Cowan. He's starting to bring that to light. So you ready, page 60? You guys on that page somewhere? What chapter is that? Chapter six. Oh, cool. All right. Gotcha. And uh, the last 10 minutes of class, <clears throat> we've been doing this in the last six or seven classes. If you guys want to talk about what's going on behind the curtain in reality, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, sometimes we open up, I turn off the recording in the last 10 minutes. You can talk about anything at all because i'm pretty much i went as far as you can down the uh, conspiracy rabbit hole to find out it was all a distraction but uh, i learned uh, the intricacies of all those different uh, places it's all it's all made up okay she knows she knows all right here we go why does ut work for some people and not for everybody i kind of mentioned this earlier healing is more complex than just purifying or detoxing the physical body Improving the diet, fasting, cleansing, right thinking, mental attitude, healthy emotions, spiritual practices, increase Shivambu's benefits and results. Health is the result of the balance of all four pillars that hold together the foundation of health that a client must achieve to produce permanent well-being. Understand? People who are miserable or self-destructive have much more work to do on themselves than do grateful, joyous folks. Self-motivated people do really well with urine therapy. A well-trained or intuitively sensitive UT teacher will make inquiries into every area of a client's life in order to design a well-rounded program to accelerate, deepen, and secure results. Detailed questioning is more, in more thorough is more thorough than just advising clients to do the UT protocols and wishing them well. So we're going to go into sessions and how to design um, treatments for them, how to make the suggestions. When you start asking people, what do you do to relax? And they have no answer. You know they got a problem. They got something going on. Do you meditate? Do you walk barefoot in the grass? Do you hug trees? Do you get hugs from other people that you like? Uh, what are you doing to nurture and love your inner child? That's, those are the kind of questions I want to know from people. Are right, you just focusing on how, how, how your life sucks? <laughs> I mean, we've got to get our head on straight as well as let the heart run the show. Okay. By taking the time to do follow-ups will bring added confidence and reassurance to the client as you work together as a team to change, improve, and save a life. Shivambo is the gift of health. 
The human body requires a balance of all four pillars of health and wellness to in order to achieve and maintain its health and longevity. The mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual aspects have to be working as one team for vitality and energy to work at its optimum. Next page, 42. Illness can occur when a person is only focusing on some, but not all of these aspects of health and well-being. Like I mentioned, the guy who was hung up on his cortis, uh, creatinine levels. He was so focused on that, he missed out that there's life going on. There's love in his life. There's good qualities. He's not even... It's passing him by, and you know people are that way. Their story dominates their life, and you can't. it's hard to reach them. When making inquiries with clients, the compelled information, the compiled information will let you not only determine which direction to guide the session, but also how to make general treatment suggestions and a program that includes all of these health aspects of health. What and how we eat affects the color, smell, texture, and taste of Orin. These, this, those people consuming a raw vegan or fruitarian diet tend to have clearer, tastier, and more aromatic smelling orin than do meat, dairy, or processed food eaters. Now, I've had to learn to not judge. I met somebody who's in the water family recently. He came up to me. He says, you know what? The best thing I've ever done with my life is to just go full out on urine and eat raw meat. I'm going, you found your path, brother. More power to you. And he was taken back because I didn't judge him. I'm going, it's not about the food trip anyway. If you can bless him, you can raise a vibration, go for it. I don't do meat. But if it's for you, cool. So you never know where people are at. And maybe he's in the process of letting go of that. Who knows? <clears throat> Orin is also affected by your state of mind or emotions throughout the day, especially during meals, snacks, or drinking fluids. Reminder. You get sick either by what you eat or what's eating you. Yes, this is two reasons. People say, what are the two reasons you get sick? Well, what's bugging you? And what are you eating? It's either one of the two. It's usually emotional stuff. Normal pH in, is usually in the range to 6 to 7 with an average of 6.2. However, which I mentioned earlier with the pH strips, I bet you yours is going to hit 8 to 10. And once you start, you know, practicing the uh, strip. A diet high in protein with meat and dairy as well as cooked, processed, altered, alcohol, caffeine, drugs, not only lowers the pH into a more acidic state, it will also increase the amount of mucus in the body, blood, and orin. Let me type in these two words. I want you to look this up. If you don't know what this is, let me explain. One is the, the chemistry and composition of foods, which you can find uh, the charts on Google. The other one is um, food combining chart. Now, if you go get the food combining chart, you will discover why foods cause gas and bloating and heartburn when they are not properly combined. If you find yourself combining carbohydrates and starch and proteins and sugars and you're getting gas and bloating in, in all those conditions, it's because the wrong enzymes are brought together and they don't digest together. And so these charts will get you really clear that eating is more than just eating raw vegan. But it's, well, it's the combination. Like you guys pretty much know that watermelons and cantaloupe and honeydew should be eaten alone, but not with anything else. And it's the same with sweet, sweet fruits, mildly sweet fruits. People try to combine avocados with fruit. People try to combine all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, they don't work too well together chemically. So when you get a chance, go look those things up. Have you have you um, have you studied these before? I have quite a bit. I I have a couple food charts and like alkaline versus uh, acidic charts and even the levels of the certain foods and mm -hmm. I can remember you know uh, hearing and experimenting with yeah like if you're eating sugars and like proteins at the same time 
it's like it's basically like it confuses the body and it just kind of like passes through you without actually absorbing it like you know, eating sugars prior to eating proteins is good because then it readies your body to be able to break down those proteins later. But if you're doing it at the same time, it, it's just not as beneficial. Right, right. Uh, one of the worst uh, um, inventions of the 1900s of our time is called a sandwich because you got pro you got protein and starch and maybe a sliver, a sliver of meat, I mean, a sliver of lettuce, I mean, most sandwiches are a recipe for disaster. <laughs> We're not even talking about having bread, but, you know, people have been eating sandwiches because it's a real simple way to make a meal and go. So I just by, by studying these charts and the chemicals and the composition, you can get a better way to navigate through your food. A simple way to approach it, and this was from a raw food uh, master that I met in Boulder years ago. He said, never eat anything with more than four ingredients in it. If you're going to have a salad, don't smear all kinds of dressing on it with all these ingredients. Keep it down to four or five things that will combine easy. The simple dressing is just lemon juice, you know, or, or something really simple, light, light uh, oil on it. So it, it's not hard to digest. Any questions? You guys are easy. All right. All right. <clears throat> Okay, let's go start some protocols because we got it's going to take us three classes to get through all the protocols. Did you have a question, Tanya? I like. I like no questions, but that works for me. Page 44. Chapter 7. You know you got there because there's a picture of the, the chalice from Monty Python from the Holy yeah. Grail movie. That's where that's from. Okay, here we go. Introducing saturation dosing, SIP looping, new protocols discovered between 2019 and 2020. When the original book came out in 2018, all that I was aware of was 11 protocols. And after researching and researching, and, and, and God bless the Water family, they send me more content than I'll need for a lifetime. Everybody thinks, well, you haven't figured that one out yet. Sage, here, you need to read this. You need to know about that. Okay, I'll add. So now, uh, three years later, I discovered there was 14 more protocols. And then when I went to a hot springs uh, four months ago, I discovered that you can actually take an eye mask that's cotton and soak it with orin and put that over your eyes and just lay there. And uh, this is a new protocol that came about this year is the eye mask. See how easy it is to come up with this stuff? Do you guys have one of these for sleeping? Yeah, well, yeah, we don't have one. Yeah, well, soak it, yeah. soak it in your water and just let it lay over your eyes and let the weight just press and just drip on you. Yeah. Yeah, washcloth. I love the creativity. It's just like having fun, like kids and celebrating and trying all these different things. It just makes it so much fun. Oh, uh, this one came from George Johnson, and uh, I I just fell in love with this one because your eyes are going to be soaking in the orin for like 10, 15 minutes, and you can actually keep your eyes open inside the goggles. If you've got a really good seal, of course, nobody knows your eyes are filled with pee, but you're walking around. <laughs> and these, these guys, I used to find, I used to swim a lot at rec centers. And these are in the lost and found all the time. They want you to take them home because they don't know what to do with them. So go to a rec center or go to a thrift shop or go to a garage sale. You can get them really cheap. <clears throat> Any questions? All right, here we go. 
A warning, page 44, it is generally not recommended to combine Orin therapy with the use of prescribed chemical, allopathic medicines, or recreational drugs. The combination may be dangerous to your health. Why taste the risk? Wait one to two hours before or 30 to 60 minutes after eating or taking medication to consume Orin. Begin with the topical or external applications of AUT until you are free of all medication. And I already brought this up to you, Anna. It's just it's just to satisfy the mind of the person who's over concerned that oh my goodness, I might be purging these chemicals or get back into my blood. Mm. Yeah, I'll be using that one a lot. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so give them a safety net. Say okay, an hour on the other side. Okay, page forty-five. Orin therapy protocols. Shibambu is a free, all-purpose self-care medicine. Make Orin your default answer to any and all concerns or conditions. Remind yourself that you carry Shibambu in a secret container, a bladder, in a body that speaks a language that just the two of you can understand. How's that for personal medicine? You guys speak the same language. Returning the healing water from your source back to your source, or from you to you, will ensure a long, healthy, and joyous life indeed. Build a lifestyle that will keep you young and healthy for your entire life by practicing UT protocols every day. Page 46. <clears throat> the Shivambu lifestyle is a labor of love. Ask any healthy, vibrant, and devoted Shivambu enthusiast why they're happy and well. They will exclaim with great passion in their voice, I'm blessed with health and aliveness because I drink my water. A glass of pee a day keeps the doctor away. L'chaim. Number one, oral application. Not only ad addresses all diseases, Orin makes a perfect rejuvenating tonic. As a baby step, now here's a baby step for you guys that are trying to get people to start, you know, the newbies. I'm going to just tell you from experience without looking at the book. It's called a baby step. Really simple. Then I'll go back to the book. Have somebody collect their Orin. Well, that's a big one for people, isn't it? Just go pee in a jar and come back. That's the first step. Number two, have them put a pinky or a finger in the Orin. You watching this, Ray? I am. I am. All right. This, this is classical Brother Sage teaching. All right. Have them put their finger in the Orin. Notice they didn't get sick and die. All right. You touched your pee, it didn't harm you in one way. Step number two, put your finger in the Orin. Lick it. Notice you didn't get sick or die. Step three, get your dropper bottle. Right? Fill up the dropper bottle. Put a drop under your tongue. And then you're going to step them up to it. Put a whole dropper full. Put several dropper fulls until you can get up to an ounce or two or three ounces. And that's when you cut them loose. Okay. That's called baby steps. You want to form a neural net, a new association in the mind that doesn't have a negative association. So they're going to basically give themselves new instructions and new ideas that this is actually beneficial. And maybe mm. the doctor's got it wrong. So that's what you're doing is you're building a new pathway to their mind. Any questions about baby steps? You might not have, you might even have your own version. So if you do come up with it, let me know. Mm -hmm. uh, page 46. As a baby step, place a dropper, dropper full of orange under the tongue or ask the client to dip a finger in some of the collected orange and then lick the orange off their finger. This will help them form a positive association with drinking orange. They now have a wonderful natural antibiotic and remedy for anything. The more you drink the water, the better you feel. When people ask that question, well, how much should I drink? How, how, how good do you want to feel? <laughs> it's up to you. How often should I drink? How good do you want to feel? As often as you want. You're going to have to make some lifestyle changes to, to actually build this into your lifestyle. You're going to have to do some adjusting. Because if you get to where you're, you, you can't live without it, it's it's commitment. It's not addiction. But I can't live without it. 
wherever I go, I've got a jar in my backpack, in the car, in the glove box, uh, something folding, wherever I go, you know, I'm going to get the, uh, the bell's going to go off and my medicine's available and you got to be ready to collect it. <clears throat> Come back, Ray. Come back. All right, page 47. Beginners who start by taking little sips of orange through the day will soon be com comfortable drinking more of their water. They are often amazed how quickly they feel their energy and clarity of mind return. One of my students who's in a nearby town is starting to put it on her foot and her ankle because she fell on the sidewalk. Her legs swole up. She puts on arnica and aged urine, evolving urine, and she noticed it started to improve. And for just out of the sake of experimentation, she poured some in her eyes, and she noticed her eyes were clearer than they did in years. One application. Hi, Ray. I got a question, Sage. Yeah, Tony. So often when people, when I talk to people, they will go on Google and start to research and they research that the morning pee is the best to take. And then they want to start with that and the hurdle is very high. Because when your diet is bad, the, the morning you're in might taste funky. funny <laughs> funny, or it's very dark urine. And I, did, I don't know how to approach it. I, I tell them that the more you drink, the better it's going to taste. And maybe to start even in the evening, right? Because it's clearer in the evening when you drink a lot of water. What do you tell them? Um. <clears throat> Would they allow you to probe a little deeper into their life and their lifestyle? What do you mean? Me asking them questions? Yeah, what's your diet like? Uh, um, how well do you handle stress? Do you exercise at all? Uh, how much fluids do you take during the day? Uh huh. Um, I would ask them, where did you come up with the idea about first morning urine? Do you realize mm -hmm. that? What are you doing with the rest of it throughout the day? Because as you, as you pointed out, the more you drink it, it gets a little clearer and it gets a little sweeter and it actually tastes like an ambrosia coconut water. Yeah. So it, 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 it's going to require a little education on your part. Because right, we found that the fruitarians are in love with their water. The vegetarians and the vegans are loving their water. The guys that are on the other spectrum of food choices, they're having a tough time because it's too pungent, too salty, too putrid, whatever it is. And, yeah. and all they have to do is tweak their diet. Do you think... Which they need to do anyway. They should yeah, tweak the diet first and then drink. Nope. That's what some people think. And I said, tell them, no, just start because you automatically want to eat differently. Uh, you got to understand that there's a chemistry that changes. <clears throat> yeah. I was about to bring in Course in Miracles, Andy, but I didn't go there. <clears throat> when people are doing recreational drugs and they have addictions going on, they said, should I drink it? I mean, I'm still addicted to this, that, and the other thing. I said, yeah, you start where you are immediately because over a period of time, uh, by the way, timelines don't exist when it comes to healing with Shivamba. When people ask you, well, how long will it take to heal this? You're going, I, I'm not in charge with your timeline. Neither are you. Your body's running a show here. Your heart's running a show. So uh, when people are doing uh, addictive substances, there is a moment when the chemistry changes in the brain and the cravings will go away. We don't know how long it takes, but people on these calls have claimed they got rid of smoking cigarettes. They got rid of cocaine addiction. They got rid of marijuana addiction. One guy came on and boldly uh, um, announced he had a pornography addiction. And it, you, you might have been there. It was Elijah. And it opened up the doorway. I was just so impressed by him having the courage to say that. I realized that all addictions can be addressed. So um, don't wait. Because he can put that off forever. The same with people say, well, I have to change this and that in order to get into urine therapy. 
No, you don't. Get into urine therapy and this and that will change. There is an intelligence that comes with the water that guides us. Yeah, yeah. Got that, Ray? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's very yeah. true. I find that very true. Mm -hmm. And the people who are paying attention, the water brothers and sisters, they live an extraordinary life because they're letting their inner journey be the journey. You also notice that you stay calmer, clearer. You're able to be more compassionate with other people. There are benefits I haven't even discovered yet. Just all kinds of things that are keep coming up. And I wouldn't, uh, let me ask you this. Do you think you'd ever stop? Do you think you'd ever walk away from this path? No. <laughs> but you will find some people who did the been there, done that because they had it set up that they had to get results in a certain timeline and the timeline didn't play out. And what I got is that they weren't as committed as they pretended to be. You don't quit on a protocol just because it doesn't happen in the time you want it to happen. You've got to just keep going, keep making the changes, and by all means, get a support group. Either get me on your team or get someone on your team so when you get the hiccups and something doesn't play out right or the detox is so overwhelming, you get a little bit scared, um, get someone to help talk you through it. Because that's all it is, it's all in our head. Even though the body is on overwhelm because it's cleaning. We have not eaten pure our whole life. Except for maybe the fruitarian kids. I give them kudos for that. Okay, any questions? Thank you for your input, Tanya. It all helps. I guess I kind of had a question. Yeah, Zach. Zach. I hear you. I wanted to experiment. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to experiment um, with my urine and and see uh, put like activated charcoal in it and just to see um, what would happen. I've never heard of anybody um, doing anything with activated charcoal. You're you're fading in and out. Okay. I don't know if you have to change anything or just keep talking. Okay. Um, I just wanted to experiment with activated charcoal in my urine to just see how the population would be using. Still can't hear you, Zach. Okay. okay. We'll come back. Oh, we can hear you now. You get a different microphone? Oh. No. Do you want to say it? All right, Zach would like to experiment putting activated charcoal in his urine. Okay. Have you ever heard of anyone who's done that? No, but you can be the pioneer. Okay, we'll keep you updated. <laughs> right, uh, right now a lot of people are, are putting DMSO with their protocol. Okay. They're, they're trying all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> I don't feel the need to do it. As a matter of fact, when I go to health food stores, <clears throat> I feel like I'm walking into an, an old museum. <laughs> I worked at some major health food stores as their consultants. So I learned the ins and outs of nutrition and also the dirty secrets of manufacturers, which they don't teach you in the store. <clears throat> and as I walk through there and I go, those vitamins, that's essential. Those, that's essential. That, that amino, I have to have that amino. Do I need to have that? And I look at it and I go, well, it's in the water. So, you know, <clears throat> you have to figure that out. And I think if you come, you're onto something, Zach, uh, let us know what you, uh, what you find. We're all experimenting. There's no dogma here, remember? I don't recommend going raw meat, even though that one guy's doing it, but you know, everybody's experimenting. And that's it, he does one meal a day. I said, do you have any fruit? Do you have any vegetables? He said, no, I just have some raw meat. Uh, it seems to do really well with me. And he was, you know, he was going on and on about, well, you know, this free range and there's no commercialism. It's not about the big farms that are raising the steers. And the... I said, okay, I'm hearing you, but 
Go for it. I didn't want to talk him out of it. Some people do. Get out of here. <laughs> right. Everybody's where they need to be. Take a breath. We're going to about to turn off the recording. Uh-oh. Take a breath.